you know, I think for so long, the the goal was to get that number lower, lower. If if you were mm -hmm. on that borderline, whether it be through drugs or diet, exercise, what's the danger of trying to drive that too low or get into that mentality where you want that number as low as you can possibly get it? When we're talking about yeah, cholesterol, yeah, a couple a couple angles on this. Uh, first of all, what you eat actually has very little intake, very little effect on your cholesterol levels, mm -hmm. uh, in the sense that you produce it on your own. It's something that we naturally produce. And so when your level of intake's high, your body's natural intakes or level of production goes down. When your intake is really low, your body actually drives up cholesterol. And so you could have very little saturated fat, very little cholesterol in your diet and actually have high cholesterol in the 220s, 230s, 270s. Um, and it's because it's, you're putting your own body's production in hyperdrive. And it potentially creates an environment where there are going to be more of those small, dense, you know, numerous, the particle number, particle size uh, markers. Mm -hmm. And so that's, that's becoming a better, a better marker. Uh, you know, I think when I, when I get a patient who sends me, forwards me over lab results, and it's just your standard lipid profile, there's not much I can do with that, you know? Mm -hmm. um, uh, so that, that's, that's one angle, uh, that your intake really has little to do with, with that in the in the first place. When you, look at, when you look at cholesterol levels, one of the most dangerous markers that I can see is something like a cholesterol level over 130, or under 130, 140. Mm. And I see this most commonly in two types of patients. Uh, one is the eating disorder patient. They're just not eating, they're binging, um, they're, they're, not, they're not fueling you know, production of anything. Uh, if you look at the uses of cholesterol, in the body, it actually has a lot of positive functions. It's, it's a backbone of our cell membranes. So it helps uh, separate different compartments within the body, keep things out where it should keep out, keep things in where it should keep in. Uh, also stability, again, from oxidative damage and so forth because it adds you know, durability to, to that membrane. Uh, it's also a raw material for all of, most of our hormones, uh, particularly sex hormones, uh, you know, testosterone, estrogen and uh, cortisol, you know, stress hormones and so forth. And so when you have a low intake, or a low level of, of cholesterol, it means you don't have that pool to pull from when, you, when you're stressed, when you need to produce sex hormones and, and things in your life. And so that's the other side, uh, the eating disorder patients, also your chronic fatigue patients, your adrenal stress, your adrenal exhaustion patients, where they just don't have any raw material left. And, and that can be dangerous. And in fact, if you look at the mortality rates in individuals with cholesterol 130 and lower, uh, they're pretty high. It's, it's one of the worst markers I, I would see in, in, in my practice. I mean, I don't see it too often um, because I'm not necessarily seeing people that are that, at that stage, um, but it's, it's definitely a concern. It's one of the worst things you can, worst markers you can see is a cholesterol under say something like 130.